Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and recently my wife told me to stop impersonating a flamingo. I had to put my foot down. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam earlier today called Paleo Pines, a farming sim game with dinosaurs. Yep, that's pretty much the gist of it. Developed by Italic Pig and published by Modus Games, released not in early access and selling for 30 American dollars. Now, according to some random reviewers, this game is the perfect blend of Jurassic World Evolution, Ocarina of Time, and Stardew Valley. And that right there should put you on edge and immediately start being more cautious because in no way is this game like Jurassic World Evolution or Ocarina of Time, however you pronounce that. Why? Because because it has dinosaurs in it? I mean, holy crap, seriously? Look, in all seriousness, here's the thing. You are a random person who shows up with their own Parasaurolophus on some island called Paleo Pines. The other Parasaurs are missing. You get a rundown farm, fix it up, find the Parasaurs, and I don't really know what else. That's basically the story. So that's all I got to say about that. Now, as always, let's go into the good and the bad before my final thoughts, shall we? Okay, up first for the good is the unique idea of this game. I love farming sims. I've played Tavern Keeper, My Time at Sandrock and Porsche, Stardew Valley, Farming Life Simulator, and so many of the Stardew Valley It's a Wonderful Life farming games that I can't count them all. So I love games like this and I know what I'm talking about. But this here, a farming sim with cutesy dinosaurs that help you in various ways? Yeah, yeah, I'm down for that. I love dinosaurs. I love farming sims. So this is taking two things I love and combining them. So yeah, love the idea. The only thing that would be better is if it was a farming sim game with dinosaurs and Star Wars. Then it would be a perfect game for me. The next positive I have for this game is the music and sound effects. There's no voice acting here though, but the music is bubbly, bouncy, whimsical, fits the theme and is really well done. The sound effects are cutesy as well and also fit the theme and, you know, pretty perfectly. No complaints with the sound and music at all. Hell, even farming and clearing the debris sounds appropriate. Even though it's cutesy, it still sounds like it fits and it sounds realistic. So that's all good. It's good to listen to. There are also some things with the gameplay I like, but there's also some things with the gameplay I don't like, so they're also going to be in the negatives, but we'll get into that later. For now though, you have to use different dinosaurs for different things. I have no idea which ones do what yet, but I think I can guess. And I have no idea because for the first two hours, all I really did was farming, uh, not really knowing what to do or where to go because the game didn't teach me. But I'm pretty sure that the Styracosaurus is going to be breaking boulders for me, while the Parasaurs are going to be cleaning up the debris for me. But yeah, you get to use dinosaurs for different chores basically and they can level up and the, the more you use them which will increase their stamina so that way they can do more stuff in a day they uh you're also going to need different types of food for them um herbivore or carnivore food depending on what kind of dinosaur you have they also poop and you can use their poop as fertilizer for your crops which is also really handy although i will say considering i feed my dinosaur a big buttload of food and then I wait three days and he hasn't pooped yet. Makes me think my dinosaur is sick. Maybe they should be pooping more. I don't know. But I, I poop at least once a day. And I need to stop talking about poop. Last but not least for the pros is the stability. The game was running smooth as butter. No crashing, no clipping, no freezing, no frame rate drops. Everything ran smoothly and everything worked really well. So I'm very happy to see that. Very happy to, to be able to declare that. Alright, so that's all I got to say for the positives of the game. Next up, let's go into the negatives. But before that, my channel only grows if people actually watch my stuff. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys and girls out there who are supporting me or checking this out could help spread the word of my channel and show it some love, especially if this content helped you in some way or entertained you in some way. Thank you. Now then, on to the negatives. The first one I have that really stuck out to me was the user interface. The user interface is just awful. It's confusing, it's jumbled together, it doesn't give you any help, and it's all just a bit unknown. With no tool tips, you don't get any kind of explanation of items or what they do or what they're for. It has no tool tips, like I said, so when you're searching in all the stores, they'll have little pictures, and if you click on it, it will tell you what it is, but not what it does or what it's used for. You know, some are obvious, but for the other 50%, you have no idea what they are, what they do, where to use them, or why. And you have to manually click on them to see what they are, because it won't even tell you anything about them. Also, there's no hotbar. I mean, what kind of farming sim game doesn't have a hotbar for all your farming tools or ease of access? It does have shortcut keys, but doesn't tell you which one does what or let you remap them. It doesn't let you remap any of your controls. Sometimes it'll have you click to do something, other times you need to click and hold it to do something. But again, it doesn't tell you when, or what for, or why. The game is littered with bad UI functions like this, which makes playing it super annoying. Next up for the negatives is the tutorial. It's pretty much not there. It lasts for like two minutes, only teaches you the bare bones of the beginner basics, not even bothering to cover what comes after those two minutes, and then expects you to just know what you're doing. Plus, the tutorial is kind of vague, and the game actually encourages you to go into the help page to learn the game yourself. Which, I don't, I don't understand that. 
If you could take all that information and shove it into a help screen, then why not just put it in a tutorial so we can actually play the game and learn the game at the same time? I hate games that don't have a good tutorial. I know that some people don't like tutorials. I don't even like tutorials. But if I'm going to play a new game, I don't care if it's something I've seen a thousand times before. I, you could be doing something different, which this game is doing something different. So teach me. The next negative I have is the gameplay. Like I said, it's going to be in both. Now while it does have some really fun aspects like riding and loving dinosaurs or the classic farming sim stuff like hoeing the ground, planting and watering seeds and selling crops, it does a lot of other things in a really annoying way. Like the devs have never made a farming sim game before, which if you click on the devs on the Steam store page, they never made any other game before. But regardless, they made some really dumb decisions here. For instance, why does sprinting subtract from your stamina when you also need it for doing chores? It makes you never want to sprint because you'll run out without getting any of your stuff done, and that also goes for your dinosaurs. Now the dinosaurs can level up and increase their stamina, but you can't as far as I know. Also, as far as I know, there's no way for your character to replenish their stamina unless they sleep. I literally bought cooked food, and I had vegetables in my pocket, but the game just won't let me eat them. Now, I don't know if that's a bug, or if that's a design decision. And even though my dinosaur was leveling up and getting more stamina, and my character was not, it was just... I, I have enough stamina to take care of maybe 30 or 40 plant plots a day, which means I can never have more than that without the use of a dinosaur. And yeah, that will be nice and cool, but what about until then? Well, until then you're just shit out of luck and skipping through your days like crazy. Why can't I eat? Why can't I go inside my home? Why let me buy furniture at the store if I can't go inside and set it up or look at it? Is it outdoor furniture? What if I don't want outdoor furniture? And you don't get an axe or a pickaxe here. Everything is for dinosaurs only. Dinosaur slave labor is this game's main bread and butter. You use them for literally everything, and if you don't have one, you don't get to do stuff. I mean, it's an interesting idea, but in the beginning of the game, it's slow, boring, and it's just its just really annoying that I can't do stuff myself. Maybe I just gotta get into the mindset of using the dinosaurs to do these things rather than doing it myself, because every other farming sim game I've ever played has you doing it yourself. So, maybe that's just me, but it is really slow in the beginning as you're trying to learn your way around, you don't know what you're doing, the game didn't teach you what you're doing, and dinosaurs do different things, but you don't really know unless you go get one, but then how do you know which one to go get? Because if you're not going to know what it, you know what you see what I'm saying? I could go out and, and tame like three, four different dinosaurs, but have no idea what they do and end up not getting the one that I need. Also, the character creation screen is just awful. It doesn't give you a lot of choices and they have no in clear indication of male or female. So you're just kind of guessing, I guess. But even then, it's like they kind of do. Like this one is like supposed to be male, maybe because uh, the dress is here, but the pants are there, I guess. I don't know. But at the same time, it's like, why restrict us in that way? If you're, you know, anyone can wear anything. Anyone can look however they want, you know. So why even bother divvying it up if you're not going to divvy it up, if you're not going to divide it up in an accurate way that actually makes sense? Does that make any sense? The point is, is the character creator was awful, didn't have enough choices, no clear indication of male or female, so I had no idea what I was doing or what I was looking at. It took me two tries to make a character who looked male, and I still wasn't happy with the final choice. The town is mostly empty, with only a few NPCs who talk to you and give you quests and stuff, and they don't have a large selection in their shops either, I don't know, maybe it'll adjust as you progress throughout the game. Look, the thing is, I love the idea of using different dinosaurs as tools. It's a really cool and unique idea, but the game never taught me how to get more dinos, or when I could get more dinos, or anything. So I'm just trying to do everything by hand. Hell, the only reason why I know you can use dinosaurs as tools is from the Steam store page, not the game itself. The last negative I have here is the price tag. Uh, to me, in my opinion, this game is not worth $30. I mean, there's no voice acting. It's got a slow start. The graphics are passable. They're not beautiful or gorgeous. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the art style is cute and fits the theme, and there's not a whole lot wrong with it, but I'm struggling to see why this game is worth $30. I mean, my time at Porsche is worth $30, and it looks better and has voice acting. It's also larger in, in every way. My time at Sandrock is $25, and it's bigger and grander than Porsche. This game is missing too much, and I think its price should be reduced by 5 or $10, and then it'd be appropriate. Alright, so that's all I got to say about the negatives, so let's recap. It's a cutesy game with a cutesy art style and design, got cutesy music and sound effects to fit its theme. It has a really unique idea of being a dinosaur farming sim with a unique gameplay component of using dinosaurs as tools, but it's got an awful user interface, a horrible character creator, it's charging too much money, and it's a bit slow even for a farming sim game. And I mean... Come on, a perfect blend of Ocarina of Time? How? Because you can play a flute? Shenanigans! Jurassic World Evolution? Cause it has dinosaurs? Shenanigans! Stardew Valley? Cause it has farming? Shenanigans! 
Jurassic World Evolution was a theme park simulator with dinosaurs, not a farming sim. Ocarina of Time was an RPG adventure game, not a farming sim. And Stardew Valley? Sure, yeah, you're right, that one was a farming sim. But it had so much to do with customizing your farm and forming relationships, having a wife, getting married, having kids, and so much intricate details in its design of its slice of life aspect that this game looks pathetic in comparison. So, I don't know what games Radar was smoking when they said that, but that's bullshit. Look, do I recommend this game? Well, to put it bluntly, I, I mean, if you love dinosaurs and farming sims, then hell yeah. This game could be a lot of fun. To be fair, it, it's really not a bad game. It has its issues, sure, but if you can get past those issues, which in my opinion are kind of small, then this game could end up being a lot of fun and really take up a lot of your time. I mean, it's put together fairly well, it has a decent idea and way of going about it, and it's unique, original, and different from things we normally see. I personally would probably wait for a discount before picking it up, but still, it's a nice cute little game with nothing overly wrong with it, except for its user interface. If you're a fan of farming sims, this is definitely one to check out just to see what it's like taming and using these dinosaurs on your farm. All right, everyone? All right, so that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much to everybody who stopped by and gave it a watch. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.